Dr. Ganesh Cheruparambal is a researcher specializing in policy analysis, sustainability, and economic research with experience in ESG consulting, data analysis, and project management. Holding a PhD in interdisciplinary studies, Ganesh has worked across academia and industry with a focus on research and economic policy. Currently working as a research assistant under Fadal Kaboob and Stephen Hale. Today, uh, what I'll be dealing with is illicit financial flows and their impact on poverty. And the overview for what I'll be doing today is I'll just explain what we mean by IFF. So it is, a, in short, it is called IFF, that is illicit financial flows from countries. Then its correlation to poverty and its relation to some of the development indicators. I, I have taken a few then a few examples on a country basis and conclusion. So that's all about today's presentation. Now, what is IFF? So it's basically, we can say that the illegal movements of money or a capital from one country to the another. So now how it is being relevant to poverty? So basically from each country, there is a loss of crucial resources that could be used for development in uh, health, education, and different sectors. So if you check for each country, you can know that how much amount of money could be invested in these sort of areas where the improvement could be far better, we could see. Now, the sources, of course, is the cross-border money laundering, tax evasion, corruption. There are quite many uh, factors which comes in invoicing, like under-invoicing or over-invoicing. All these factors comes into play when we speak about illicit financial flows. Now, this IFF include tax evasion, corruption. So basically when there is a corruption, people can take money from one country to the another country and where they could invest in uh, with a lesser return. So that is also possible. So at least they create wealth in some other country. So basically speaking, there are no much means to control this or know about this. So when we try to do this, we try to look at the balance of payment data to understand these sort of flaws. I mean, uh, illicit flows happening between the countries. And estimated globally, it is one to $1.5 trillion annually on a global scale, that is in terms of illicit flows. Now, the sources are criminal activities. It could be supporting criminal activities and because of the corruption in the country, tax and other commercial practices. So all this gets factored into this one, uh, illicit financial flows. Now, how these things are done, there are multiple ways this is being done in internationally. Now, how IFF, that is illicit financial flows, affect developing countries? Of course, in terms when the resource or the capital is moving to another country where you evade the tax. Now, the government will, of, of course, will fall short of revenues. Now, it will drain domestic resources critical for poverty, elevation, and development. So most of the time there are tax evasion. So some countries where if you look at the global tax system, there are variations. Of course, it depends on the country. But then there are countries where people try to evade tax by investing in some other place. Or even the companies by itself, they can do uh, this sort of tax evading purpose by investing their own affiliations in another country where the tax havens. So they speak about the tax havens. So this way also, this illicit flows can happen. Now, developing countries lack me mechanisms to detect and curb IFF effectively. So that is one of the major problem which currently most of the developing countries are facing. Now, this is something uh, about how or what is the total percentage or the total amount of illicit flows which is happening. Now, there are two things which is happening. One, if you look at BOP residual and then a trade misinvoicing, the total capital flight. Now, illicit flows can be termed as a broad capital flight where you can have different methodologies in calculating this. BOP residual is basically the World Bank residual method, which 
they basically depend upon the balance of payment data. So then when we look at the balance of payment data, then we try to calculate that. They Sometimes people use hot money method. There are different methods which are available as of now. Then the second one or the trade miss invoicing, which is over here, trade miss invoicing, you need to understand the trade partners of each country. So it is a tedious task to identify the data and the mismatch between those data or the total amount. Then that is the way they come to a conclusion. The illicit flows are happening like this. Now, this is basically in the African region, which they have taken up. It's almost like... $284 billion in 1970 to 79. So if you look at uh, these numbers, 396, 181, 291, 858, these are the total broad capital or total capital flight which has happened till 2018. Now, if you look at the whole data which is available online or any other source, what happens is this, you can un, you can identify the continents, but the country-wise data are more tricky, or you can say that it's a slippery slope to a larger extent because of World Bank residual method and trade misinvoicing because we depend on country data which is being available. If there is a, some sort of manipulation, no way our calculation can meet somewhere. So different method, methodologies can give some sort of hint. So that's it. So this much of total amount has gone as an illicit financial flows. Now, what happens is this, if you look at, uh, through this as averages of selected development indicators, these are some of the development indicators. Now, if you look at the access to electricity, so this is 2019. Now, this is the world, total world, the, the rest of the world, and this is for the Saharan uh, African countries, sub-Saharan African countries. Now, the access to electricity is very, very low compared to the rest of the world. Now, this by itself can have a polarization of the knowledge sharing which is happening in the world. That is one of the major factors which can also, there are people trying to study how much the internet has penetrated into the rural side of countries, especially the developing countries. And it actually gives uh, how much is being denied or, see, this is just before the COVID. Now, during COVID, quite many things or even the learning has gone online. Now, how much impact it could have given or it could have been on certain countries. So, it by itself, by means of education, can pull down a certain category of individuals from getting more educated or getting into a job market much easier or easily or earlier in their life. So quite many denial by itself can happen. Now, these are the literacy rate and other factors which are happening in all these uh, countries. What are global and regional impact of IFF? Now, if you look at this is a case of Ethiopia. Now, there the IFF, that is the illicit financial flows were 1355 percentage. That is almost like 13.55 percentage of the foreign direct investment. That much of money have moved out as an illicit flow. So that is the case of Ethiopia. Now, if we dig into each of the economy, we can find out how much percentage have gone. Now, the Zambia, its IFF constituted somewhere about a quarter of total trade. So the total trade, a quarter of the money has moved out as an illicit flow. So approximately, when we look at uh, the poverty index or the countries in the poverty region, or we can say that Africa has lost approximately quite a lot of dollar fifty billion annually to IFF. Now, why these 2008 to 2012 years? Because if you look at the GFI, that is the Global Financial Integrity that Institute, where they have studied this, now they have come up with a certain countries, basically more of a region countries. The report came out in 2015, but up to 2012. The problem of the complexity of getting the data and getting the proper result out of the data is a bit difficult because, as I said, it depends on quite many other factors. Now, IFF and the poverty correlation. 
there is a chart. High levels of IFF are correlated with the high poverty rates. And of course, all this, the IFF flows are being seen basically in, uh, if you look at the chart for most of the poverty con level, the countries which are in a higher, there the high level of IFFs are seen or the illicit financial flows. Of course, the resources lost through IFF could be used for social services like the health, education, all these sectors, they could be invested much. Countries with poor governance and high inequality experiences high IFF. So one of the problem is there is a social, economical, and at the same time, the political dimension which gets into a country. Now, this also can promote, if there is a corruption, the flow of IFF into different regions in a higher amount. That also happens. So that is why the countries with the poor governance also attribute to the high IFF. Now, if, if you look at this chart, uh, you can see this is IFF in relation to GD, GDP. Now, when this is Human Development Index, the United Nations, HDI, if HDI is high, it is better. But when countries with a huge amount of IFF, that is uh, this side where the IFs are high, now you see a negative correlation when uh, it is high that you can see that uh, IFF uh, or the human HDI is also very, very low. Now, if the HDI is much higher, better. But then there are a few outliers, but comparatively, when IFF is lower, HDI index is much better in those countries. So that is where this correlation has come up. Now, just looking at few countries and illicit financial outflows to public spending on education. Now, if you look at the total amount spent on to go the country for uh, education, now this much, 2435, that is almost like 24.35, <clears throat> of a quarter of that amount is gone as an illicit financial flow. So that is how, how much this affect the total education system or the investment or spending on the education affects the country. Now, these are all the countries which are getting affected. Now, this is the first 25 countries. There are, the list goes on and on, but then when it comes down, it is very minimal. So by and large, these are the countries where they lose in terms of IFF, that is in terms of illicit financial flows. This is basically one of the indicators I've taken as an education. Now this is on public spending on health. Now same Togo, if you look at, it is almost like a 10 percentage which has gone of their uh, total amount of uh, spending on that. So there are other quite many other countries also which do have. So if you look at there is a, quite a good percentage which is moving out as an illicit flows from most of the countries. Now this is illicit tax revenue. As basically when you look at the tax revenue, this is like nine eight five. That much of amount percentage of total spending that is the revenues that much amount has gone out as an illicit financial flows now almost all of these countries so this much amount actually if they could retain that much amount could be the source or income i could act as an income for the government to act or act in a better way giving a more governance more money or even they can make the system far better to a larger extent to elevate poverty in that countries. Now, which are the channels through which the IFF works in poverty? Now, erode tax base, reducing funds for public investment in poverty reduction programs. Obviously, when the tax revenues which comes up to the country, if that much amount to a larger extent, quite a lot of amount goes out of the country, of course, their resources for uh, getting into any sort of this uh, sort of projects to elevate poverty or not even just the poverty for that matter, any of these human development indicators or the development indicators, the cost of spending or the money for spending on that reduces. So it obviously affects lower education and healthcare funding directly impact poverty elevation. And 40% of the countries have IFF exceeding education expenditure. Okay, now there are poor 
customs efficiency, weak financial regulations, which also enables IFF. Uh, it is not just the problem of one country alone. The country in which the others are dealing also matters a lot. Lack of transparency and weak enforcement of tax laws. And there is an inverse relationship between custom efficiency and IFF volume. So if the efficiency of the custom or the laws by which the customs operate are comparatively weaker, there is a huge IFF possible. Now, most of the things which I have taken is from the African countries because now there are, with whom I work, that is with Fadel Kaboub, Professor Fadel Kaboub, they all work with the African region and there is so much of data. That's why I have specifically looked at that. Now, IFF drain funds necessary for achieving SDGs. Obviously, when we speak about SDGs, the funding has to come from somewhere. Now, for that also funding, there is so much of leakage in this way. In a specific region of Africa itself, if you look at uh, that is the latest numbers, that is a dollar eight eighty eight point six billion, which is being uh, gone out. And there is a gap and urgent need for measures to curb IFF to ensure progress on SDGs. Now, there are trade mispricing, uh, that is uh, sometimes some countries are uh, under invoice, lower invoices or over invoices uh, the trade, and that is how they are uh, trying to move this IFF across. Uh, there are solutions to combat IFF. See, the blockchain is a better solution which can come up, and if it is being accepted globally in a wider range, now that could, because the transactions ended could be registered forever now the generation of data could be much better. That is one of the major things which can happen. Now, obviously, an international cooperation to track and recover IFF is much, much needed. Now, this is a, some uh, Africa tried an African continental free trade area, which they are trying to promote this transparency. Now, if you look at Nigeria, see from 1917 to 2018, it almost like a dollar four sixty six point six billion being gone out, and obviously it affects their investment in healthcare, education, and infrastructure. Zimbabwe, for that matter, like almost like a dollar twenty billion that also has gone out. Kenya, it's almost like a dollar thirty point nine billion. Now. Yeah, this is Angola. The capital flight is somewhere around a dollar one zero three point one billion, and that has gone out of Angola. Now, if you look at Argentina recently, last year, yeah, I think in twenty twenty three itself, it was in uh, more in the news about uh, the internal uh, problems and the economic problems which Argentina face, uh, faces. So that is why, though this is not in the African region uh, I have taken up because they also have l gone a lot of uh, IFF which is moving offshore in terms of billions. So it also has affected their economy. That is one of the reasons which, uh, and there are policy issues of, of course, uh, accompanied with this. That is why Argentina I have taken up. So the word for word is curbing IFF is critical to reducing poverty and inequality when I speak from the point of view of or angle of poverty and inequality because it basically drives the resource out of the country where they could spend more on the development in indicators. Now, strengthened governance, international cooperation policy reforms are required because internationally, when we look at or even BOP data, uh, uh, sorry, balance of payment data, which we get from um, IMF, now, if you look at the same data cross-check with uh, the national data, sometimes this data, which uh, the internationally, which they put out, I mean, the countries which they put out, there is a possibility of them to manipulate the data if that is possible. If the blockchain comes in, this sort of entries may not go off. But then how many countries will accept that? That's still a problem. Then mobilizing domestic resources is key to sustainable development and poverty reduction, which obviously when we look at the African continent or the countries, there are a huge movement in this line, even about the SDG, even about the climate finance. There are quite many things are happening in this line 
which they speak about how much IFF, that illicit financial flows, have moved out of the country and curbing that. And they are also trying to compensate in this global north and the global south divisions where the capitals have grown or broad capital flight happened. So that's all about the IFF. And these are some of the references, basically global financial integrity and capital flight measures. So that's all from me. Thank you.